Right, hello guys and welcome to today's video. And today's video is going to be my final Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 review and discussing overall was MW3 worth it. I'm going to go through my positives first, then my negatives, and then give my overall opinion of Modern Warfare 3. Before I get into my overall review, I want you guys in the comments down below, let me know your overall review of MW3. What do you think of Modern Warfare 3? Give me your positives, give me your negatives, and then tell me what you, uh, your overall opinion of Modern Warfare is. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you think it could have been better? Do you think that, you know, it's not a great Call of Duty? Let me know down below. I'm interested to see the opinions on this because I think Modern Warfare 3 has been an interesting Call of Duty and it's going to have a lot of haters and it's going to have a lot of people who love the game and I'll share with you guys share with you guys my opinion at the end. But what we're going to do is we're going to start with the positives, okay? And right out the gate, my first one, we'll talk about the thing that is most important in Call of Duty, the gunplay, movement, time to kill, just the overall playability of the Call of Duty, right? And Modern Warfare 3, I can safely say, is, has been great. The gunplay is great, the movement was done to perfection, and the time to kill was absolutely perfect. It wasn't too slow, it wasn't too fast. The actual gunplay, like, you know, every single weapon versus every other weapon, you could use anything in this game. You could use a pistol, an SMG, AR, uh, a sniper rifle, LMG. There were so many different things that you were allowed to use in this game. Yes, there were some meta weapons that stand head and shoulders above the rest, but it wasn't like you couldn't use certain weapons in this game. A lot of weapons were very, very usable, and I think the overall actual balancing of weapons in this game has been fantastic. Yes, like I said, there have been issues at some points, but normally they've been quite quick to fix them. At the moment, we've got a sh shotgun situation. Whether or not that gets fixed, I don't know. But even then, I still think the game is in a very healthy place when it comes to its actual gunplay movement and stuff. And if you are one of those people who hasn't played Modern Warfare 3, you know, and is wondering, you know, kind of what the gunplay is, for me, it's an 8 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. It's not the greatest of all time, but it is absolutely up there. Even the tax stance edition, it was, I, I do think it is a very useless edition. But it was still fun. It was a little bit gimmicky. It doesn't really help you too much. It was quite fun as well when that LMG came out that was really broken. That was very fun to use with attack stance. But it still had its place, I think. I think Modern Warfare 3 has a very good overall gunplay movement and time to kill. You guys let me know what you think when it comes to that down below. But next up, we're going to move on to our next positive. And this is the best positive that I can say about Modern Warfare 3 content okay the maps that they added to the game it's crazy that we talk about the maps in such a good light now when it comes to model for free because at the start of this game everyone knows that everyone hated this game for being a plagiarized you know, uh, using old maps, and this is Modern Warfare 2 2.5, and it was using maps from MW2, the original MW2, and had known fresh maps. If this game had released with the maps that it has brought to the game since launch, I don't think anyone could have any complaints. The maps they've brought into this game have been fun, they've been different, they've been unique. A lot of the small maps are even really good. Like, I've, I've enjoyed the maps. A lot of the maps have been absolute bangers. They're not going to be classics in the Call of Duty, of course. They're not going to be classics. They're not going to rival a nuke town or a firing range, etc. But the things they brought to this game when it comes to the addition of maps have been absolutely spot on. Like, they, I can't I can't fault it, you know? Yeah, there are some where people would argue, like, well, they haven't had enough ground war maps or the war mode that they kind of abandoned. I get that if you played one of those modes that you'd be a little bit upset that they didn't really bring maps that. But as far as 6v6 goes, which is what I primarily play, 6v6 has had it great with maps this year and has been absolutely fantastic. And I, I, so, I thumbs up to Sledgehammer on that one. On top of that, aftermarket parts, what an unbelievably great addition to Call of Duty. It made the game so fresh. Every week we were getting some sort of new weapon, it felt like, because we were using aftermarket parts to change a gun, like a, a fully automatic assault rifle would soon become a burst uh, assault rifle, or a shotgun that could be dual wielded, or an SMG that could be a burst gun, or a sniper rifle that could do some crazy thing. Like The aftermarket parts have been an absolute banger, and I want to see them in future Call of Duties. The problem is, I've heard there's a rumor that Black Ops 6 will Will not actually take advantage of this and i think that is absolutely woeful because every week was fun to get on and do your challenges it didn't matter if it was in zombies multiplayer warzone you name it you'd complete your challenges and you'd get a brand new aftermarket part to use on a weapon even camos were being given out like crazy we've had so many great camos in this game like unbelievable like the the free content in this game right and let's talk about that part you know right a lot of things in call of duty most of the time are paid for like store bundles etc all this content has been free from like zero nothing you don't have to spend any money you just played the game you got what you rewarded you know you played the game you put in the time you complete the challenges you got tons of camos for free tons of maps tons of essentially new weapons 
because of aftermarket parts. Absolutely the best Call of Duty, and I'm going to say this, the best Call of Duty when it has come to content, and I will stand firm on that, right? It is the best content Call of Duty we have ever had, and that is something I think a lot of people have got to praise Sledgehammer for, like, absolutely. And then finally, Sledgehammer support and open communication and just overall care for the community. I think they care, okay? I'm going to put them up there. I put them ahead of Infinity Ward. We'll see what happens with Treyarch's Black Ops 6 game, you know, to see if they're actually better than Sledgehammer or not. But this year's support for this game has been pretty good from Sledgehammer. Not perfect, but very, very good. They've been open. They've told us exactly this and that. It's, they've been fun to joke with and so I've seen them on Twitter. They, they talk to the fans. They are opening, they are listening, and they really do care about the community. And that's another thing that I can give a pat on the back to say, Chairman. And overall, those are some really good positives. And I think it's a, just great. I think it's been great when it comes to the positive in this game. But we will end the video towards the end now with some negatives, which we're going to talk about. The cheating issues, which, again, I can't really put on Sledgehammer. I feel like cheating issues are something that Call of Duty as a whole is just not dealing very well with. And I think that's more on Activision than Sledgehammer itself. So that's why this is not such a big negative. But obviously, cheating is cheating. It does affect the game. It does ruin the game. And it is quite annoying. Even with like the crossplay thing, like turning off crossplay doesn't exactly stop cheaters if you're on Xbox because you can face PC players, which is a big no-no. I don't think cheaters have been dealt with the most fantastic way in this game. But it's definitely not been the worst. But it is still an issue that I'd say has to go in the negative. Um, Skill-based matchmaking. Even though I do personally get around the skill-based matchmaking by just turning my crossplay off. Like on Xbox, we just don't have a lot of players. So I do, as you can see in the gameplay, like it's just easy lobbies, right? But skill-based matchmaking is still an issue. Uh, they have at least this year put out a lot of information as to how the skill-based matchmaking works, as how much you believe it is up to you. Um, me personally, you know, I don't mind facing it. Like, I get around it at this point. You know, it's been in Call of Duty for years, but it is still a negative that you have to put there. Like, I don't think skill-based matchmaking in the way it is currently should be the way it is in Call of Duty. But unfortunately, it's just something I'm to stick with. And I don't classify it as too much of a negative again on Modern Warfare 3 because I don't think it's a Modern Warfare 3 problem. I think it's just a Call of Duty problem and an Activision issue that does plague Modern Warfare 3 a little bit. But finally. This one is definitely on Sledgehammer. I, I feel this is definitely on their end. Like They could have done better with this. The end of game lag issues. Not overall, right? This Modern Warfare 3 has not had these lag issues all year. Well, obviously, we went through an entire month where I made crazy amount of videos discussing this. I think they did a really bad job on this as well. Was the overall end game lag issues. I don't know what it has happened with Call of Duty, especially in Modern Warfare 3. Towards the end, we've had some crazy lag issues. I have managed to sort them out. Obviously, I've had many fixes that I've posted on the channel, which if you guys want to check out, it's up to you, to fix the lag for myself in Modern Warfare 3. But it was absolutely ridiculous. For Xbox specifically, it was very poor. And they did go through that entire month where they really did not help us. So as much as I talked about their good communication, that was the one moment that let them down. The, everything that happened with the lag on Xbox and then when the lag happened to everyone was pretty poor. Like Everything to do with lag in Modern Warfare 3 was really, really, really poor to the game. And it did leave a bit of a sour taste to me. Like I, I genuinely would have rated this game a lot, lot higher. Like We're talking like a, almost a 10, right? And I say almost a 10, like, and I'm talking like Black Ops 2's a 10 to me. You know? Black Ops 1's a 10 to me. Like Every Call of Duty can get a 10, right? It's not like I can only give it to one game. But overall, what would I say for Modern Warfare 3? Even with the lag issues, the cheating, the skill based matchmaking, and all the other positives, for me, this Call of Duty is an 8 out of 10. And I do think it would have been a 9 out of 10 if it wasn't the lag issues. The lag issues for me really did get, like, spin a massive negative for the game, especially with how they dealt with it and still the fact that the issues still kind of exist for a lot of people. But for me, I think the content, the overall gunplay, the actual just get the game out the box and play it is fantastic and i feel like it's a game that anyone can get into and just play like i've seen it now with obviously being on game pass a lot of people are getting on this game and you know getting grinding camos like there's a lot in this game for people i think this has been one of the best call of duty games in years and in fact i will go down and say it right this this for me even though it's an 8 out of 10 call of duty is a top five call of duty for me and i know a lot of people are going to disagree with that and that's perfectly fine we are allowed to agree and disagree here on the channel and in this community but for me, this was a top five Call of Duty game. I have loved a lot of this game. And I'm going to miss this game. I, I think Black Ops 6 is going to struggle to hold a candle to this game. But overall, 8 out of 10 game. And if you haven't played it, give it a shot. Especially if you have Game Pass. Honestly, I do think it's worth a shot and playing. But you guys let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. What do you think about Modern Warfare 3? What is your overall opinion? Your positives, your negatives? 
And again, your overall opinion on Model 3. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, subscribe, notifications on. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.